Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we've got a lot of subfloor demo and repair that we have to do. Um, I'll just show you guys what we got going on real quick. So this subfloor right here is like all rotted out. Um, they had a water leak in here and I don't know that you can tell the extent of the waviness and stuff like that in it through the camera. You can tell definitely right there around the commode is like rotted all out. It's about to fall through. You can see the breakage and stuff like that in the floor right there. There is actually the seam which is on a joist. It's held together just because it's on a joist and that's the only reason. But you can definitely tell that there's no structural support around that commode there. Um, we'll have to do something about that and um, Anyway, let me come in here in the closet, which is right on the other side of the wall. And this is going to be the same thing. We are going to be tearing this floor out and redoing. Let me see if I can get a tape measure here on this so you can kind of see how much of a, how wavy this is. You can pretty much see under it right there, but this is between the joists. Uh, if you can see that right there, that is like almost a two inch dip in the floor right there. So, it's pretty, pretty dramatic. So, we're going to be, anyway, we're going to be demoing, taking all that stuff out and replacing with new New subfloor, new underlayment, and putting vinyl down. So stick around and see how we do it. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and get all of the tack strip tour out. We need to get it out because I want to cut really close up next to the edge of the wall. To for my other for my new board replacement so we're going to go ahead and get all of this rotted tack strip tore out I ain't going to worry about cleaning the staples out of this or nothing like that because it's just all coming out but we are going to take the tack strip out just because we need to cut up close to the wall so I'm just going to take my super lifter and hammer. This should come out pretty easy because it's all rotted. So, there we go. Yeah, I just might have to go back and pull some nails after the fact, but it's definitely coming out real easy because it is rotten. So, anyway, go through get all the nails out so I don't hit them with my blade when I'm cutting the floor out and um, you can see it's just pulling out little chunks of the floor where it's so rotten get out of there Boy, that right there is bad okay so looks like we got everything there okay so i'm just going to continue doing this and get all the tack strip out and then we'll go from there that'll be the first step is to get all the strip out so we can um cut our floor out so we'll start with that and come back in just a second well it looks like that they have replaced they have replaced the line right here so I'm sure this is what has broken and that's good because now we don't have to worry about it leaking because it should have a new new uh, it's got a new valve and everything like that on it or it's just got to be careful about taking and um, bending these too much if you'll notice I'm kind of holding it as I turn it so that I don't uh, uh, 
so that I don't bend the water line too much because them things don't take a whole lot of pressure and they snap. So be careful on that. Good. All right, we got both sides of the the bolts took up there. Right there we got the nuts took off the the bolts. On okay. both sides, we are ready to lift this bad boy up. And I like it about mobiles because we are able to. I always got a real shallow tub so I can just set it right over in that tub and lean it backwards and that will let the water drain out. If you lean it backwards before you get it where it's going you're going to have issues with it leaking out so you don't never want to let a toilet lean back So, now, hear that, Let the, you lean it back and all the water comes out of it, it looks like maybe that the wax seal has stayed on the bottom of it, and it did, so, alright, got that out of the way, I didn't mean to let that fall over like that, I don't typically do that. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing that we want to do, um, since we got the tack strip up and the commode is out and stuff like that, I'm going to take my little um, uh, oscillating tool. You can see what kind of blade I have on it right there. I am going to cut right around the edges of the walls to free all of this subfloor up. Okay, so again, I'm just going to take and cut right along the edge of the floor up against the wall, okay? And we're going to free this up that way we can pull our floor out without um, it'll be a nice clean cut and we'll be able to get the old floor out easily set on a little bit of an angle as you can see right there and that's because I'm cutting up underneath of the toe kick and I just want to let you see how that works out pretty good right there can you see that that is less than a half an inch or maybe right at a half inch and that is not concerning me at all because we are going to have a quarter round to trim this out so that even if a uh, quarter round say quarter round wouldn't even cover it it would still be okay I would just run some base or something underneath here but I'm sure uh, no higher than that if I can keep it that low quarter round is going to be just fine so anyway I got my blade on an angle and I always use these uh, blades oops I always use these blades with a gold tip right there. They're a little bit more expensive. I think they're like almost 40 bucks for a pack of three of them. But they sure last a lot longer, okay? They're carbon tipped. So it is a little bit tricky to get it under there and get it placed in the right position. And this is going to be a little bit loud here. So y'all just bear with me. I just wanted to show this. <laughs> you'll know 
notice when I was cutting that I would push right straight along and then I would uh, go in a downward motion after I would push forward I would go down until I felt like I was through it I was obviously on a floor joist right there so watch and you'll see this part right here is going to be on a joist which the wall sets on a floor joist but over here you'll see my saw blade go all the way through as I cut Because there is a joist right here I only want to go um, deep enough to where I think I'm cut all the way through the subfloor I don't want to cut into the joist no more than I want no more than I have to I just want to make sure that I am cut all the way through the subfloor over here you'll see my saw drop all the way down after I get off the joist you'll be able to tell <laughs> So we have went so we've gone all the way across the room or all the way around the room we've gone underneath the toe we've gone underneath the toe kick we have gone all the way around let me flip this around here and I can show you we have made our cut all the way around you can see it's cut all the way around the walls I'm not too concerned about the paper coming up that's actually it don't it looks kind of dramatic right there that's only maybe three quarters of an inch or an inch maybe at the most up but there is baseboard going back down so I'm not concerned about that anyway however it does look really ugly in the camera right here but it don't bother me because we're going to put some baseboard in here that's probably uh, two two and a half inches or three inches high so you can actually see where there was carpet in here right here so I want to get something high enough to cover that at least at the minimum anyway just showing that we got our cut all the way around the walls now what I want to do even run the tub I mean the shower and the tub we was able to we was able to get it cut this is the tub okay so now what I'm going to do I want to start in the little cubbies and work my way out the door as I'm tearing this up so I'll start over here in that cubby and I'll get that section tore up that way I'm not trying to balance on joists if I started over here in the doorway and worked in this way tearing stuff up I would be trying to balance myself on the joists and stuff like that but if I work in this little cubby right here where the commode goes get that out come over here by the shower start getting this stuff out get this stuff out and then just kind of tear up and clean up as I work my way out the door I can um, finish up right there in the doorway and I won't have any won't have to do any balancing act or anything like that trying to keep myself on the joists and not going in the insulation through the plastic that's on the bottom of mobiles so um, that's the plan I'm going to get to tearing stuff up and it's already all loose right there where it's all busted you can see already so that's going to make it a nice easy starting point to just reach and grab hold of that stuff and start tearing it up so I'm going to get to tearing this up and I'm going to clean the joists up as I here we go I'm going to clean the joists up let's see okay so I'm going to clean the joists up as I um, 
I just said brain fart. Oh, I'm going to clean the joists up as I am uh, taking the floor up, sand everything off. I got a little palm sander I'm going to use, and I will take and pull all the staples out. This stuff is probably going to be stapled down, so I'll pull all the staples out, sand the joists off, make sure it's nice and clean for the next board as I work my way out the door. Okay, so we'll be right back with that. So now that I got everything cut around the walls, I have took my skill saw and I've adjusted my blade uh, to go one inch deep rather than five eighths or three quarters or something. I want to go a little bit deep um, just because of the fact that this is swelled up and there's humps in the floor and stuff like that. So the extra bit um, is going to make, is going to allow my cut to go all the way through. So I'm just going to cut this in smaller sections. Um, I got some here and here, which is about every foot and a half or or so. I'm going to cut it in pieces so I can take it out easier. It, it's going to make it easier to take out and stuff. So, um, with that being said, let's let's get to it. Okay, so that this floor is already rotted, now it's cut into little sections so it's even more weak. So we definitely got to be careful where and how we step so we don't fall through and damage anything under the floor. Um, my skill saw will only get so close to the wall, so I'm going to take this and finish out my cuts all the way to the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all these cuts and then we'll go from there. So I'm fixing to start tearing up now. Um, I've got my nail biters and my little sander and a hammer and a pry bar and this is what I'm going to use to get this stuff up and if needed I'll use that if not cool. Anyway, as I got it going there I'm just this side piece over here is already really loose since I've got it cut in places. You can see here because I've got it cut in pieces, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this piece out right off the bat. Again, I think I mentioned this last time, but living in the desert, I'm always a little bit leery about pulling these up because of rattlesnakes might get under there and live in the insulation in the winter time and that it is winter time so I'm always a little leery about that um, right here around this pipe we got to get this hole big enough we don't want to come up and knock that so I'm just gonna bust that on out there we go it's ready to go now okay so be careful where I place my knees because I don't want to fall through here. That's the main thing. Well, 
this stuff has already fell way down in there. Probably when they redone the piping from fixing this, they knocked their stuff down in there. So it's already the insulation and stuff is already way gone back there. Peace out. Okay, so that's the reason why I cut this in pieces because it comes up much easier if you put you some saw marks across there and cut it into pieces rather than rather than cutting it up into I mean trying to take it up in big pieces. Whoa. Floor is starting to fall through on me where I'm sitting. Okay, so don't step on that. So I don't know if you can see these or not. These are staples that they put their floor down with. That's why I have the nail biters. Can you see them right there? Just re-say everything you just said. Okay, so whenever they build these manufactured homes, they staple the floors down. So that's what the nail biters are for, is to pull them staples out. And there's also, they put glue on there too, on these joists. You can see right, uh, you can see right here where they did their bead of glue. See the, how the board is stuck? They didn't get very much on that one. You can see they didn't get none right here. But over here, it's all stuck. So we want to just get these joists as clean as possible um, for our next board to go down so we're not having squeaks in the floor and stuff like that. So um, that is what I got the sander for. And I got a really coarse pad on it. Well, I say really coarse. It's, it's an 80 grit that I have on it and I'm gonna give it a try if it don't do it fast enough maybe I'll just take a scraper or something to it but I'm gonna give it a try right here right now on this part right here and see what happens think that is going to be just fine any anything that's left on there I'll just hit it with that sander real fast and that makes it nice and smooth and gets rid of all the debris for our next board so I'm just going to clean this section up like I said earlier I'm going to tear up and clean up as I work my way out I'll do this and then I'm going to start at the back and work my way out the door that way I'm not having to balance on these joists as I'm coming way over here to clean this up. I'm going to keep my floor down until I get this clean and then I'll tear, tear more up and clean it, tear more up and clean it until I get all the way out and then I can just start afresh with new board and walk my way right back through. So that's the process I'm going to do and I'm just going to get on to it. So I just wanted to point out that I was using a chisel and a hammer um, to get rid of the bigger stuff that gets stuck to the joist. You can see this clump right here. This clump right here. Stuff like that. I am taking my chisel and knocking off. It would just take too long to uh, to sand all that. So I just didn't want to leave the impression that I was sanding every bit of it down. But as you can see up through there, I just took this section up all that is all good and ready to go uh, since I am cleaning it up as I go and leaving something to set on as I work. Um, that's the first time I thought about doing that and I think that was a pretty good idea. I'll probably start doing that in the future because it really works out nice and um, after I get the big stuff off of it again I'm just... <laughs> 
Again, I'm just taking the sander and hitting the, hitting the rest of it right there and getting that knocked down smooth for my, uh, so that my boards will go down there good. That's a little bit of a clump right there where there was a gob of glue. So I might have to sand on that for just a second. And I'm using an 80 grit. Pretty smooth. So because I'm using the sander with one hand and I wanted to be able to hear my voice real good, I'm holding the microphone with my finger and I feel like Joe Dirt speaking to the microphone. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I just wanted to point that out about using a chisel to get the clumps and that's what I wanted to point out and it's real nice and uh, good to keep it all cleaned up like this this is working out really good so I hope somebody can take something from this part so something I wanted to point out real quick because we're on this next piece here oh that gun is killing my legs uh, we are on the next piece here getting ready to take um, out around the vent and I just wanted to point out that these are the duct work is stapled into the into the subfloor with staples about maybe an inch inch and a quarter going in that way in the sides so if you just snatch that off you're going to tear a whole bunch of stuff up so just take your time right there and pull the staples out I'm going to take my screwdriver you can see there I think let me come from this side See that right there? You just pull the pull the uh, staples out of the subfloor. You can see how big them staples are right there. Let me see if I can get one of them out real quick and show you. Okay, so there's one of the staples right there. So if you just go snatching this piece of wood up, you can't. Yeah, I can you can't see it. Can Can you see it? right there so that's what they fasten the duct work to on the subfloor so if you just go snatching that up you're going to tear a whole bunch of stuff up so just take a second to take your screwdriver or a chisel or something and pull pull them staples out before you pull this pull this board up right here that's all I wanted to point out about the duct work there you see the staples there don't take long to do it, and it's uh, sure sure save you a lot of headache if you go tear the ductwork up because this has got to go back. You got to cut the floor out, and I'll probably just shoot a, screw, a few screws on the side of that, or maybe even just some uh, uh, staple guns from my my underlayment gun. I might I'll probably just do that as a matter of fact and staple it back into the subfloor that I that I put down with my underlayment gun, the Bostitch staple gun. Okay. So anyway, got them all out. Now this is freed up, but we don't want to pull it off because under underneath of all this insulation right here, that's the duct work. So this is still connected to that. So we still just want to be careful not to snatch that piece of aluminum or it ain't aluminum, but a piece of tin off. Missed one staple right there. Okay, all right, so that's what I wanted to point out. We're going to carry on tearing, tearing stuff up. So what I got here, um, where the joints meet of my plywood, I don't want to just have a joint here. I don't want it to just butt up like this, and then when you walk on it, those will move up and down between the, between the joists. So what I'm doing is I'm screwing these um, two by eights actually seven and a half. look just barely over seven inches but I'm just screwing them here and having them overlap as you can see I got a couple here already I'm just having them overlap that way whenever I screw my next sheet to it 
I got a uh, something to connect these two this and the other piece of plywood that goes right there so just so I know I, I take my pencil right here on the edge of my board with my tape measure and I just run down there like uh, three and a half inches that way I can get my board just about ain't gotta be perfect but just somewhat somewhat centered there and um, I always whenever I'm doing a bunch of screwing I'm taking tap my nails in with the hammer it sure makes it a lot easier as I tap them in like that I'm able to get my hand on it and use the drill so I, I can hold it up tight as I screw it in After we get that done you can see this joint right here that runs right through there that's how it'll look I got a few screws on this side and a few screws on that side if you'll notice they're not in a straight line I kind of stagger them out if I just took and put a bunch of screws in a straight line right here there's a good chance that this piece of the board would just break off so I kind of stagger my screws on the board that way it don't create a weak point Okay, I just wanted to point that out. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail on this. This place is full of mold and it's got me feeling real bad. So I'm just going to hit the highlights of this job and do what I have to do to get out of here. The gentleman told me yesterday whenever he let me in to do this that he didn't, he didn't want it all. He just wanted to get out as cheap as he could because he's just getting the floor in so he can sell the place. So, um want to take his advice on that I hate to do that usually when people ask me to do that I will go overboard anyway just so that I can have the self-satisfaction of a job well done but um, in this case this place is full of mold and it's got me feeling really bad so I'm just going to get this done and get out of here like I said I'm just going to hit the highlights of the of the points there so something I wanted to point out just real quick uh, a person might think I really drove that screw because it almost goes through the board that's not a good idea if you'll notice right here you can see my screws uh, okay. this one right here got too deep so I put another one right here beside it so it would still have some strength what happens if you shoot your screw almost all the way through your plywood you don't hardly have any strength because it's just holding on the bottom layer or maybe two layers of the plywood this is a five ply plywood we're using here so you definitely have to countersink them but at the same time you just want to countersink them you don't want to go real deep in the wood or else it loses strength just enough to get them below the surface is what you're wanting so I just wanted to point that out real fast
tough getting on the other side. I'm a little close to the tub, Dadgummit. And these joists are so twisted. Look at that. I'm not tight at the bottom. I got like a half inch gap on top. straight if I can. I got a uh, about 23. So I'm gonna put that mark about right there. getting this framed in here and then I'm gonna call it a day myself if I got enough light. Let me finish this one piece right here. seam right here so I'm putting two screws in in the same board there the screws from this and the screws from this board so those I put in an angle this way these I'm putting in an angle that way just to kind of make sure it gets a good bite because I only got one two by six width right there and I got two two sheets of plywood on it push my seam, push my screws in a little bit of an angle. I'll just sink them just enough. Turn down that one a little bit enough. about everything um, like I said it's just been feeling really bad ever since I've been on this job because of all the mold even though we got it out of the floor let me show you something right here on these walls let me 
say that. I don't know if you can or not. There you go. Can you see it? It's like so soft. I know that there's just there you go. Now maybe you can see it going in and out there. Or maybe from a side view. Yeah, see that? So I know that behind this sheet paper this sheetrock is just full of mold. So it's what's have been having me feeling rough ever since I've been on this job and if I was probably in a better mood or something or if just felt better I'd probably say something stupid like there's mold in them there walls or something like that but I'm not feeling good so I want to call it a night. So there is just a couple of things I wanted to point out. Right here in this last little corner I had to put a couple of braces in. Uh, let me back up so you can see exactly where I'm at. So I am here beside the cabinets and there was nothing there because the joists is run crossways like that. So I had to put a couple of braces in here, push the insulation down and stuff. And um, as you can see I had to uh, the main thing I want to point out here is right here whenever I put my braces in I make sure to push it all the way up against the existing floor and the same thing over here I pull it all the way up against the existing floor that makes sure that let's see here when this goes on over that way it don't dip down if it was if this was lower than the existing floor say if I left a half inch gap that's how much this floor would slope down that direction a half inch so I just wanted to point that out right there so something else I just wanted to point out really fast here um, before I put my board down I marked my joist or I marked the existing board here and also I marked the wall right there you see my pencil mark right there and about centered of the stud I mean the brace that I put in and then same thing there same thing there and right there that way whenever I put my board down I know where I can screw it to it and make sure that I get my screws in the braces that I put down so I just wanted to point that out real fast Okay, so we got the under, I mean the uh, subfloor completely done in both rooms. Probably could have went a little bit out right there. You see it run off into the bedroom just a little bit. The uh, water damage did, but that's not too dramatic. Like I said, the guy just wants it presentable to put on the market because he was actually fixing to put this on the market and then um, this happened so he stressed it to me I've actually done work for this guy before like I said earlier but he stressed it to me that he did not want any extras done he just wanted it presentable so people could walk on it and um, he could get it on the market so with that being said um, it's time for some underlayment now we got all this done and whenever I get ready to, sh to uh, attach that vent, I will show that. And back here at the water line for the, um, the commode, uh, what I'll do, Ben's, I got just a slit out like that. I could have put a brace back here in the floor running this direction between the joists to actually hold that up. But, and then I could have also screwed the piece that cut out right here. I could have screwed it back down. But um, because he did, like I said, he just wants it done. So what I'll do, I'll push this up like this and I'll run my underlayment cut coming right along through here like that. And then that will hold this in place that way because it'll make this cut like I got right here in this floor. My underlayment cut will go this way and that will hold that right there in place. So anyway, I just wanted to show everything about the subfloor real fast and um, 
yeah, we're ready for underlayment. So once again, we are, you've already seen me do underlayment a ton of times, so I'm not going to get into that. You've seen the subfloor and I'll show it again probably when we get the underlayment down and then the final product after we get done with everything. We're going to put baseboard and stuff like that down too. So I will show the, the product as far as everything like that after the underlayment and then after we're completely done and let you see what it looks like. I'm to the point now I got all the underlayment done um, and I'm ready to fasten this vent back to or the ductwork back to the subfloor and I made a boo-boo right here. I cut my vent a couple inches too far that way is putting this ductwork back to the subfloor like it's supposed to go. So I'm going to pull it up there pretty much flush and I am going to use my staple gun and I hope it don't shoot all the way through. So I'm just going to do this and kind of angle it down that way it ain't got no take a chance on it coming up and getting me. Okay, that's going to work out just perfect. It's a little high on that side. tell by looking at the corners I got my vent hole just a little bit big uh, let's double check make sure it's gonna fit make sure all the edges are going to cover okay yeah I'm more than good enough so I got I got probably a quarter inch right here or more to to, to mess with there and right back here around the water line I was talking about my subfloor, the actual subfloor cut. The actual subfloor cut went straight with right back here, just like so. So, like I said, to hold it from going back again, I didn't want to cut my underlayment there because there was nothing there to nail it to. So I cut my underlayment cut this direction and just put that piece right back in there, the underlayment piece. So that holds this right where it should be for when I set the toilet, my water line will hook right back up. So anyway, that's how I took care of that. And we're done with the underlayment now. Time to hit these seams and get some vinyl down finally. This has been a process of it. So anyway, we are fixing to hit these seams and get going with some underlayment. Vinyl. I mean, yeah, vinyl. Okay, time to sand and get some vinyl going on. Okay, so this is the overview of the flooring that we put down. We kind of got stuff all in this closet right here. So I'll just let you see what you can see. But anyway, I got all the bedroom furniture in there um, for the sake of installing carpet in the bedroom and I'm fixing to call the homeowner here so he can come back out and I don't want to do this while he's here so we are installing this carpet and then I'm gonna I'm fixing to, as soon as I get done with this video I'm gonna call him so I wanted to get this done before he came out and this is the bathroom that we uh, demoed and installed the vinyl we got all new baseboards and all that good stuff let's see here it looks a hundred percent and I would go as far as saying 150% better than it did whenever we got here. Everything turned out pretty daggum good. Pretty pleased with everything. It's like pretty pleased. Anyway. Let's see if I can focus in there a little bit. Okay. These corners here. Okay. 
Okay. Now we'll just kind of look at the whole bathroom here. And since this one is not um, all piled up with furniture, which was glad. This is the other view of it right here. Everything turned out nice. You can see that with the light coming in the window there, everything's nice and flat. So that worked out really good. Okay. So with that being said, FBSB is out.